How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel for a very exciting Star Wars Squadrons video and as you would have guessed by the title of the video I got to play Star Wars Squadrons thanks to the EA Game Changers program. So I got hands on with the game, I got to test out some of the modes as well as some of the story. Now we'll get into my impressions of the game as we go throughout the video and I'll run gameplay over in the background as the video goes on as well. But as always, before we get into all of that, be sure to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with post notifications on and let me know down in those comments your thoughts of the gameplay as we go. So anyway, let's just dive straight on into this, hopefully without me saying something I'm not supposed to. So what are my thoughts on Star Wars Squadrons? Did I love it? Did I hate it? Or was it just okay? I honestly have to say that I am definitely leaning towards loving Squadrons. Now, one thing that I want to make very clear before I even go any further in this video, because I know a lot of people call, you know, Squadrons Starfighter Assault 2.0 from Battlefront 2, and it's just an extension of that game mode. I'm going to set the record straight. Squadrons is nothing like the Starfighter modes in Battlefront 2. It is very different. It plays completely different. The look and the feel are different. The controls are 10 times more in depth and it is way more immersive. Now, I didn't actually get to test out the game with VR or HOTAS, just controller, but I'm telling you, this game is going to be something else with VR and HOTAS. It is going to be insane. And I must say, Squadrons has a pretty big learning curve. Like, it was actually a really challenging game. I died constantly, and that was the case for a lot of the other people who got the chance to play as well. Let's just say the KD ratio wasn't looking great. But I will say that the difference between watching the gameplay and actually getting hands-on is beyond a night and day difference. I know a lot of people have judged this game very early from just the early gameplay. But I honestly encourage you to keep an open mind before you write this game off because it is very surprising. I see a lot of people who say that they aren't interested so they'll just go play Starfighter Assault in Battlefront 2 and honestly if that's your mindset you're really missing out. Because after playing Squadrons, going back and playing Battlefront 2 Starfighter modes, they just seem shallow and boring. It actually really shocked me just how different this felt. And also just how many upgrades they made to Starfighter combat as a whole and just how in depth it is. Like, there are so many things to do, it's honestly a little bit overwhelming at times, and I got to play the game for a couple hours, and I still didn't have the controls down pat, I was constantly getting confused. Like, there's a lot to the gameplay, which is going to ensure some longevity, which is really good. One of my favourite parts of just the way it felt to fly these ships was just how different they all felt. When you are in an X-Wing, you feel the perks of having a ship where you can do everything. And when you're in an interceptor, you feel the fact that they are fast and, you know, maneuvering through rubble and stations is really satisfying. But in my opinion, one of the best things, and it's only a small detail, but you don't explode the second you get anywhere near something, like in Battlefront 2. Like you can't weave through anything in Battlefront 2 because you clip something, even slightly, and your entire ship just blows up. But Squadrons completely changes that, it is completely different thankfully. Like I said, I was a shocking pilot, so I was really thankful that it works this way. Like now, if you see some stuff to fly through and, you know, do a little young Anakin spin, you can do it, and it's satisfying. And odds are, you're actually not going to blow up doing it, so, you know, it's a lot of fun. Now, moving on, and as for the modes, I got to play Fleet Battles, Dogfights, and the Prologue. I gotta say, I was very impressed with the modes I was able to play and the prologue for the story. That was actually the standout for me. Obviously, I'm not allowed to go into detail of what it entailed, but I was very impressed and it probably ended up being my most favorite part of what I was able to play and I cannot wait to dive into the rest of the story. Like, I was completely hooked by the end and I want to see how the story plays out. That aspect of Squadrons truly did blow me away. I had a blast with the story and I thought that might have actually been the thing that I was going to be least excited for, so that was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Now as for the dogfight mode, that was actually a lot of fun. It's a pretty basic mode, but it's very difficult at the same time. It's basically a TDM first to 30 sort of thing. It's 5v5 and it's pretty intense. You can spawn in as any of the different ships and each play your individual role. 
I stuck with the fighter and interceptor classes personally though, as the bombers and support ships were a little too slow for my liking. So dogfights was a dub. It was basic, but a lot of fun and pretty challenging. And I must say, you do really need to communicate with your teammates. Like if you plan to just jump into this game with no comms, it is gonna make things 10 times harder for you. Now, next up, we tested out Fleet Battles, the flagship game mode of Squadrons. And this mode is kind of the real deal. Like it was hard and I mean hard. This was not a jump in and play and cruise your way through experience, at least for me. The capital ships kill you in nearly an instant and the smaller frigates are like a mini boss sort of thing and even they kill you pretty much straight away. Like you really need to be switched on and play your ship's role otherwise your team is going to struggle. And one thing I thought was cool is if you get too close to a capital ship you get stuck in like a tractor beam and your ship basically just dies and you just float in space. It is anxiety inducing, like it's not a nice feeling to be stuck in space with your ship completely immobilized in first person underneath a Star Destroyer. It's terrifying. But that's pretty much it for the game modes. I was pretty happy with them overall. They were way more in depth than I thought and really difficult. Nothing was easy, so it's a good challenge. But if you are struggling, you can jump into practice modes and refine your piloting skills like the drifting feature like Poe Dameron does in The Last Jedi. I couldn't pull it off personally, but from all accounts, it is actually really hard to do. So, you know, stuff like that, you can just jump into practice and just fly around and try things out. And I'm telling you, you're probably going to have to do it because this game's not easy. But now moving on and let's talk customization. This aspect of the game was actually pretty cool. I could have a salacious bee crumb monkey lizard thing in a hologram in my cockpit. Like, it was great. And there was even a protocol droid's head that looked a little bit like 3PO from The Phantom Menace. And you could just put that in the cockpit of Imperial ships. And you could have like Darth Vader fanboy stuff as well. Like, it was goofy, but it made the entire experience just more fun. And you of course can customize your pilot and yes the game is in first person but you do actually get to see a lot of your character before every match you basically stand around a table with your squad and flaunt your luscious looks as well as in the menus in general like you do see your pilot so the customization is worth it as for the ship customization that was really cool too there are some really nice designs for the tie fighter that i absolutely loved and I didn't find the goofier color schemes of ships to be distracting, so that's a dub too. But now let's talk about the cons of squadrons, as we've pretty much touched on all of the pros. Now the con list isn't that much to be honest. The UI though was very confusing and there were many times where I just didn't know what the hell was going on, especially in fleet battles. Some of the radars and tracking options were a little bit confusing, but you know, most of that kind of stuff sorted itself out the more I got to play, as you would expect. But I was still fairly confused with a lot of the layout from the cockpit. One of the game's biggest upsides is the depth of the gameplay, but with the short playtime I had, that was almost a downside because I just didn't know what the hell I was doing half the time. And there were times where the objectives were a little bit unclear, but that might have been down to negligence because I was trying to figure the controls out and just take in the whole experience. So I was kind of ignoring things. But that was something that maybe could be looked into just a little bit to make it a little bit more simplified. And I will say, I feel like it's actually going to take a long time to master each individual ship because they all are so different. So that's a con if you want to jump in and feel comfortable with everything straight away, I guess. But honestly, I don't mind that. It's going to help with the game's longevity, so that's fine with me. But as for cons, I'd literally say that's about it. There wasn't honestly a lot that I didn't like. It wasn't perfect, of course, but it was a surprise. It's a $40 game, and if I didn't know any better, I could have said that it was a $60 game. The gameplay was really deep, and it didn't seem like they took any shortcuts. Even the graphics in the prologue was very, very impressive. Now, I can't actually show you footage of the prologue, but it, trust me, it was really, really good. Some really nice cutscenes to look at, and like I said, that actually surprised me. I thought the cutscenes would be a little bit average, but they were pretty good, especially for a $40 game. But overall, I gotta say, I was pretty impressed with Squadrons. It was way more in-depth than I was expecting, and I think it's going to catch a lot of people by surprise. 
especially with just how difficult the game is straight up. There is a lot to learn, a lot of features you need to juggle all at once. Like I said, dogfights was not overly complicated, but you still need to learn the ins and outs of the ships you are using. And fleet battles was just a whole nother beast, so practice is going to be a necessity, I think. But like I said, that's not a bad thing. I think the complexity of the gameplay and depth of all the features is going to keep people playing for a long time. And again, this is not Starfighter Assault 2.0 from Battlefront 2. That is just that far from the truth, it isn't funny. So I'd say give this game a chance. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Like I said, take the gameplay in the background with a grain of salt. Getting hands on is a whole nother beast for this game. So yeah, definitely don't overlook Squadrons. I think this game is really going to surprise people. But guys, that's just about it for my impressions on my game time with Squadrons. Let me know down in those comments what you think of the gameplay and just your overall thoughts on the game in general. But that's just about going to do it for me today. So leave a like if you did enjoy the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And thank you for watching and have a good one.